Hey everyone, it's Monica. Welcome back to Homeschool Voices. Today we're going to talk about homeschool curriculum options for 4th and 7th graders. I get this question really often. What curriculum do you use or do you use any curriculum? It's actually not an easy thing to answer. I think if you come from a, a school background, whether it's public school or private school, you have this idea that there's just this one curriculum that you pick and they tell you everything to do. Almost like a mini school and they just tell you what to do. And there are options like that, but that's not what I do. I've been homeschooling my kids from the beginning. I have a fourth and a seventh grader. Um, I don't even normally think in terms of grade, but now that I'm in a charter school, they, they do. So I've started thinking like that too, but I have a 10 and a 13 year old. And I'm just gonna start talking about what we do. So I'm gonna start with my 13 year old and what he's doing. Um, I'm gonna tell you first something that I wish I would have been doing from the very beginning. So it is to make a spreadsheet. It sounds so simple, but it's revolutionary. Just, I break it up into four quarters, uh, four nine week quarters. So on the top of the spreadsheet, it's week one, week two, week three, week four, all the way to week nine. And then on the left side, social studies, or history, math, science, language arts. And then I also have a couple of other random things like speech and debate and um, foreign language and music, things like that. But at least it's very nice to be able to look at a glance and say, Okay, for social studies, my kid is going to do this chapter in this book, or my kid is going to read, you're probably thinking a textbook. That's really not what we do. We will read several chapters in a book, and then they will write a summary of what they read. And then that's what they do. But you might have them read in a textbook, if you insist. I hate textbooks, but if you want to. Um, okay, why do I hate textbooks? I know you're gonna ask. Because, why? Because it's watered down and boring. Nobody remembers watered down, boring things that are irrelevant to their life, that they won't even have to access that information for daily life. So, I don't like that. So we read books, I think, I just feel like it's more likely that they're gonna remember that information. Like real books, novels, kind of things, or more interesting books than textbooks. So anyway, on the left-hand side, you just have your things, and then on week, the week one column, we'll say for math, it says what pages and what books my kids have to do. For language arts, it says what they have to do for that week. So it might include some grammar exercises, it might include some reading. So, and then, and then I have this, this little system with just one other big, thick binder, and when they're done and everything's correct, what, you know, for any worksheets that they have, it gets filed into this one binder with dividers. It is so much easier. It's a lot easier. But let me just talk to you about what we're using. So, right start math. We're on level G. I think it only goes to level um, H. I'm, I'm not sure that it'll go to level H. Um, it's sort of, it, right start math goes through middle school. And this is a lot of, a lot of geometry, basically. And there's just a lot of different exercises to help you understand it. Um, let me just show you inside the book really quick. Here we go, level G, lessons. So once you get to this level, they ask, or they, they organize it so that the kid can do it by themselves. Beforehand, they have like this whole script, which I never really used. Well, I used in the very beginning. Um, so now, the kids are supposed to be able to do it themselves. So this isn't the beginning of a lesson. So if you, drawing stars. Let's, let's go forward a little bit. The fraction chart. I feel like, like there's an interesting thing with um, right star math. There's, there's a lot of review and a lot of geometry from an early age. So they, they learn things about exponents and powers and different kinds of triangles um, from an early age. And then it's just repeated a lot. Let's see, square centimeters. Um, and there's a million different exercises and ways of trying to teach the same thing, like what is a square centimeter? He's been working on that forever, that's not new. Areas of consecutive squares. So they're adding on the next square, so like 
This would be three times three, and then the next square would be a four times four square, right? So then they move down. And again, this is not a new lesson. They did it a couple of years ago as well. I won't spend too much time on this. You can skip forward, spend like another few seconds on this. So in a way, I love this, and in a way, I've always felt like it needs supplementing. So I've always, always supplemented. So when they were little, they would have an extra workbook with just basic addition, subtraction problems, and then multiplication and division problems on the side. And now my son is doing another book, and I'll show you. Hang on. So my son also does this book. And after he goes through this book, he's about halfway through now, we will have him do Khan Academy math. So again, just to let you know, what this is what we're doing. He's in seventh grade. He's going to go through this. It's sort of like pre-algebra. It's very algebra light. It's a very gentle <laughs> approach. Let's look through it. I like to look through things. If you guys don't like to, just sort of skip forward to the next section. Um, it starts pretty. OK, so order of operations. He's been doing that for a while, but it's it's always good to have things explained differently. Properties of numbers. There you go. And you notice that at the end, it's a very small amount, which to me is, in a way, it's good. In a way, it's bad. It's not enough practice to be really solid. But I do, for what I want it for, it's good. It is um, just a gentle introduction. And I like that. Uh, what do we, what's our next thing? Got our brain ticklers. The number system, natural, whole, integers, rational, that you know, all that stuff. Let's, let's get forward a bit. Let's go. Solving inequalities. So as you can see, it's presented in a very cutesy way, as cutesy as you can present algebra. And that's what he's doing. And then next, like I said, will be Khan Academy. I'll link to it in the descriptions. We're just going to do their whole algebra course when we're done, and then we'll see where we're at. Then I might do another one if he's not solid with it. But this hasn't taken that long, and we're doing it alongside another math curriculum, so I don't know. So that's what we're doing for math. Again, so it's not like I just have um, a curriculum and it tells me what to do with everything from the same company. I, I like to pick and choose. A company that I discovered recently, recently that I'm really liking, if you wanted to just pick one company, I, I like moving beyond the page. I'm liking it. I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like. But right now we're talking about my son. So let's just look at the science that he's working on. So it comes in these, it has these workbooks. And you'll notice, let's see. It has an age range. It says 12 to 14. I think it's backwards for you, though. Semester 1, Unit 5. So there will be multiple units. They, they expect you to do one of these lessons a day. And I think if you were doing everything that you do through them, that would be reasonable for us. We, I supplement a lot, so that would be a little much. So we do one week. So here's the book. So most of these books have about nine sections. So. In theory, that, that would take you nine days. So they actually have kids doing a lot. But like I always say, you take get a curriculum and make it work for you. If that's too much, you don't have to do it all. Um, Single-celled organism, amoeba, cells in a multicellular organism like you. There you go. This is mitosis. So they tell you, which is some base, they start with some basic information and then stuff that you're going to need. So it, it came with a coloring book. I didn't just, I didn't order the entire curriculum for, for this age group. Again, they don't do it, they don't do it as um, a grade. They said age 12 to 14, which I love because all kids are different. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a spectrum, right? Stuff you'll need, and you'll need pencils, toothpicks, and this is a book, again, that, kind of comes with this particular. So if you just order stuff, this book and that book, you need to know that this particular workbook needs to also have this book. And you can figure it out. It takes a little figuring out. Or you could just order the whole curriculum. Modeling clay and string. 
So it's going to ask questions, things to know, then it's going to have questions, and then there's different activities. Um, so there's just different activities to help them understand what mitosis is. Um, interesting. And then this is a suggestion to basically make a little video presentation of them explaining mitosis um, or make a PowerPoint. And again, I can use these for samples for my charter school because they want samples or animation. So I'm pretty sure if we look back, it would say that these are option, different options. And now we're on to lesson nine. But it also had, it also will give you links. So for stop an action animation sample, but you can actually get apps on your phone for that. And then for that too. So that's pretty cool. Well, let's just quickly look here. Oh, this one was disgusting. He kind of, I think he kind of did this. Or maybe they have him do more than one. Or they, I love it when they have them grow disgusting things in the house. It's so lovely. Anyway, the kids like it. Activity two, doctor, doctor. Identifying biohazards. <laughs> um, and then they have like, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting smattering of things. There's projects, there's worksheets. Uh, some of the things are optional, so you can pick one or the other, which kids always like that. Let's kind of talk about logic. And logic is not a, uh, a class that is taught in, in local public schools. And you can tell. Just There's no nice way to say it. You can tell. And you have to make an effort to teach your kids to be logical because most human beings just won't be unless they're taught. So one way that we're doing that is this book, The Art of Argument. Uh, prior to this year, we have used what is it, the, thinking, the thinking toolbox, I believe. That was good. And this is basically this book does informal fallacies. And the thinking toolbox goes over informal fallacies. But this has more written work and you have to answer questions more and um, it's just a little more involved. But whatever, as long as you start to engage your kid and make them aware of things like logical fallacies. And another thing we're doing is a debate class in the park. And interestingly, I'm finding that kids have a very hard time. <laughs> they have a hard time with it. So we tried to do a debate. And it, it, it wasn't, it was good considering it was their first time, but it wasn't good. And I'll explain why. Because I realized the kids, just the concept, which I did explain, but it, they needed, they needed a lot of help with it. The concept of somebody making a point, number one, they made a point. You hear, you can identify what the point is, and you respond to the point before you make your point, and then you make your point. That process was really difficult. So logic, in my opinion, is super important. My child is doing art of argument, the debate class, also a speech class. Um, online so that is called speakers league so both my son and daughter my 10 and my 13 year old do speakers league and i think you can do that from anywhere in the country um so if you look them up i'm, I'm pretty sure that you can and it's very valuable because you can do it online i mean it was in person and now everything here in california is online i do prefer it in person but i kept doing it because i actually still think it's valuable online, not only just getting used to speaking to people, you know, speaking in front of people, but also learning how to organize your ideas in a, an effective way, basically writing. So it's just one more bit of practice for writing. Again, moving beyond the page for our language arts, we are doing, I think he just finished this, but this is Animal Farm. And again, um, it has it has your child read the book and think through it, but not, you know, they don't just learn language art stuff. They also learn history through it, um, the various exercises that they have you do. So it's really, really excellent. And then they have some grammar exercises mixed in here. So some grammar, some history, and also language arts, really. It's a real mix of things. It's really good. This is the book, Animal Farm. 
And I think there's about nine units in here. And so it goes over everything from business letters to comprehension questions. Let's see, pronoun and reference agreements. Again, more comprehension questions, pronoun case. So it mixes in grammar, comprehension questions, and a little history, uh, Animal Farm and the Russian Revolution. So it mixes in a little history too. Really cool. And then also for language arts, um, we wrote, my kids wrote a book last year, and it was such a good experience that I wanted to do it again. So we're again doing a class in the park where we're doing it with other kids, and I did get it from Easy Peasy. It's the seventh grade curriculum, I'm pretty sure. And the seventh grade curriculum does a lot, but towards the end of the year, there's this process where she walks you through writing a book. And it's actually not that hard. Um, it's easy enough to where I can kind of walk other kids through it, and it's a good experience. And for my son, for social studies, I like to call it history, but I guess this is social studies, um, this particular book. So again, these are almost like unit studies. It's really only intended to last about nine or 10 days. Um, we do one a week because I have them reading other books and doing this club and that club and it just gets to be too much. But um, civics, this one has them learning about their state government, their federal government, um, just dabbling with the constitution and getting familiar with Federalists versus Anti-Federalists, um, the Constitutional Convention. So I have the Mayflower Compact. So it has them doing a lot, so I'm liking it. Um, a lot of that stuff, my son, I ha we had already gone over a lot of it, but they're not gonna remember that much the first time you go over these things unless they happen to be really interested. So it's good to do it more than once because I think those particular civics is particularly important. So I, I am liking that with, with moving beyond the page. Also for history, my son, or social studies, my son is reading The World of Columbus. The World of Books are a really pretty excellent series. They try to make it more like a story and a little more interesting. I have to say my son doesn't adore it but he doesn't have any idea what textbooks are like, so I think if he had something to compare it to that was truly terrible, like a history textbook, he would adore it. <laughs> but if you were to ask him right now, he would say, oh, I don't like that. But he's reading through it, and he reads a chapter, and then he writes like a couple paragraphs about you know, what he read. So then my son is doing just a couple of other things. So foreign language, he's learning Spanish. He does it, he was doing Duolingo, and then he got sick of it and now he's doing Babbel because, um, well, we probably would have paid for it, but my charter pays for it. So it's cool. What he likes better is that he feels like there's more real life situations. Um, he feels like it's more, what he, the words that he's using are more useful. Um, so he's liking it a lot. And I feel like it teaches a little more grammar than Duolingo did. Um, and then what I do, because I'm crazy, is I, I got like a little story online in Spanish, okay? And then you can get stories that are dual language online for free. You can find them, just Google. Um, but you can also use Google Translate. So every week I make three pages. I started with five, it was too much for me too. Um, but now I make three pages a week. And a lot of times I just have them translate it into English or Spanish, like two, two of the sentences in the story. And then sometimes I'll take a couple of verbs and I'll have them, I'll write the infinitive and then I will have them conjugate the major forms that are used the most often. Um, and then translate words. And so by the time, it'll probably take another month to get through the story, but they will be pretty familiar with all of the words and the verbs. And I like doing the verbs too because these online apps don't really do the verbs very much. And then eventually, down the line a little, I'll get a tutor so he can get more um, spoken practice. But right now, we're pretty happy with the worksheets that I make and Babbel. We still practice cursive once a week. A few sentences in cursive. Whenever they do a letter wrong, I just have them write it out correctly. 
Uh, I do something called print dictation. I do this thing where I just read a couple of paragraphs from a book and they have to write it all out and I, ha I read it carefully so that they can hear the periods and the commas and they have to write it all out and when they're done I go through and mark anything that's wrong and then they, they copy it out um, but usually like the next day I put it uh, they have they have these binders and there's like a couple folders the first folder is work that they're currently working on the green one here for him and the blue one is work that is done so um, after I mark the corrections I will put it back in the green folder so he knows he still has got to make corrections and work on it um, so he did they do that and they do a little piano every day and then speakers league I have that on here once a week. So that's what my seventh grader is doing. Let's move on to my fourth grader and I'm gonna start with science. Thank God I purchased this stuff with my charter funds because I'd be really irritated if I used my own money. <laughs> but, whatever. Dirt and plants, moving beyond the page. Now, if you watched the first segment with my son, you can see I like moving beyond the page. I think there's a lot of good stuff. But I think you need to evaluate everything um, kind of individually. And my daughter was not liking the science. And I started to look through it, and I get what she's saying. It, it would only be a useful um, thing to go through if your kid really loves this kind of stuff. If not, they're not gonna remember, and you're just wasting their time. For my daughter, we are doing things a little differently. We started using Moving Beyond the Page for science, and um, I think at that age, when you're 10 years old, you really just need to just learn random facts about the world, random facts about the body, facts about you know space and dinosaurs and, and rocks and all kinds of stuff. And you really need to foster an interest. And I think it's worse to make a kid hate science than to do nothing at all. And I mean that 100% literal. I literally think it would be okay to do nothing in the elementary age other than read books. I do think that every week you should get books. Some of them should be science -y, some of them should be history-ish, and, and some should just be stories, but not only stories, right? So I do, I do think you should do that. Um, but I literally think you'd be better off to do nothing with science than to kill their love of science. And I was starting to kill her love of science. <laughs> She's starting to hate science with moving beyond the page because it was just, um, it just felt to her like busy work. As I started to look through it, I think a lot of you would like it. Um, so let me just sort of flip through and just show you and you just sort of decide what you think. So there's this book that they had to read called Dirt. And so there's various little exercises, experiments with soil. So some kids would dig this. and. I think the key is if your kid would like it, then, then you should do it. And if your kid doesn't, then you shouldn't. Because these things are not necessary. Like for example, there's something about the parts of plants. Um, you don't need to make a school lesson out of flowers and leaves and stems. Um, if you just really dig it and your kids love it, great. But I promise you, your child will know what flower petals are and stems and leaves without ever making it a lesson. And that's what I find in a lot of elementary aged history or science programs. Uh, just much better just to read books. So that's what we've moved to with her is to read the Magic School Bus books because she likes those and to write a little bit about what she's read and to watch the videos that go along with them. So that's what we're currently doing with science with her. For social studies, my daughter is reading two different books and again she reads the books and she writes a little something about what she learned um, just from one of them actually. Um, so she reads This Country of Ours. So you could just look that up. It, it is a history book but it's written more as a story. It is more engaging than a textbook. Um, she doesn't love it and um, so that's the bad side of that. I, I would like to move more towards things that she likes, um, but she's picky, so it's hard. <laughs> but I'm, I'm always trying, but she's doing that right now. And a book that I quite like called Explorers Who Got Lost. Again, it's a history book about it, the age of exploration and explorers, and it's actually a lot more entertaining than this country of ours. So she's reading those two books. For language arts, she's doing two things. 
One thing is going through this series called Grammar Tales, which a lovely friend gave to me. So I got that for free. If you have a nice homeschool community, a lot of times people just want to get rid of their old stuff. They don't even, a lot of times they don't even charge for it. So um, thank you if you're watching. So this one talks about capitalization. And then, so there's the book, and then there's these little bit of exercises that they do with each one. So we're liking that. And then we also do, my daughter is participating in the um, book writing class in the park. And she likes it. It's good because it's social, because we do it in a group. And then both of my kids have really gotten into writing the books. For math, my daughter is doing two different things. One is the Cuisinart Rods workbook. So um, Cuisinart Rods are really cool. They help you really visualize numbers, but especially fractions. And so this workbook is fun. It's you do all these. You get these, you actually, they actually have these wooden pieces. If you look it up, here's the spelling. But they have you do these little, these little riddles. And it's easy for me to chuck, because if the riddle's right, I know she got everything right. So it's fun. She doesn't have to, I don't think she has to color them in. She just likes to. So this is teaching her fractions. This is what my fourth grader is doing. And then she's also just sort of like trying to get faster with her, her basic math skills. So this is a, a sixth grade Saxon math. Um, but what this is, is worksheets. It's just worksheets. And she just wants to go through it and she wants to get faster. It's mostly just multi basic, basic multiplication, division um, stuff. And towards the end, it starts to move into measurements, um, things like that, fractions, percentages. So towards the end, she'll go through all of this. She won't have any problem with it. She'll do the whole thing this year. We planned it out. I put it on my spreadsheet, and it, she will definitely get it done. Um, so again, I don't do tests. So we just do it like a worksheet. I, I don't do it like, oh, let's test you. and. I mean, it's obvious when they're having a problem if they get it wrong, and you obviously need to work on it more until they stop getting things wrong. So we don't do it like a test, but I, I will use this as a worksheet. So I'm taking this and I'm making it work for me. So that's what she's doing for math. For logic, my daughter is doing the fallacy detective. I can write it down in the description. It is just a book. You just go through it. It's I think the chapters are maybe three pages. So you read about a logical fallacy and then there's examples. And then you have a list of questions and you have to decide if it's a logical fallacy or not. So it's really excellent and it's very digestible. And I think she actually likes that one. For foreign language, my daughter was doing Chinese last year and I think she liked it but it was really hard to find a teacher around here that didn't charge a fortune and it is complicated and I can't help her. So she's decided to move to Italian because I know a little Italian, I certainly know the basics and I can help her. So she's doing Duolingo. She is not interested in for whatever reason in doing Babbel. So she does an app on my phone called Duolingo. And then I also make worksheets for her. I got the three little pigs in Italian and she's just working through it, uh, copying out in Italian and then writing the English translation, translating words, and then writing verb conjugations from verbs in the story. And then of course my daughter is practicing a couple of sentences in cursive every week. I read a couple of paragraphs. She has to write everything out correctly. I, I make notes of what needs to be corrected and the next day she would write it out one more time correctly. And then she has a debate class in the park. She has a speech class online. And that's what we're doing. <laughs> in addition to that, I do have a reading list um, that I incentivize by giving them some sort of little prize, like maybe a boba drink or something if, when they finish the list or something small. I might spend as much as $10 on something for them. Just a little incentive. So I hope that's helpful. That's a lot of stuff. So when people ask me what curriculum I use, I usually just sort of like stare at them because <laughs> I know, I, I, but then I know what they mean. They, but as you can see, I cobble it together, right? It's not just one company. I do use a lot of moving beyond the page, but I, I don't only use that. And if it doesn't work, such as, you know, with my daughter and she was really not liking the science, we just move on to something different because I would rather them enjoy it. Now I'm not going to be a slave to that 
you know, for example, she doesn't love the history book that she's reading. If I can find something she likes better, great, we might switch it out. In the meantime, she's just gonna read that book. I hope that helps to clear up what curriculum we use or how we go about homeschooling, however you wanna think about that. Um, if you have any cool curriculum suggestions, please tell me in the comments below, what are you using right now? If you like this video, please click thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, please click subscribe and the notification bell next to it. In the meantime, happy homeschooling and have a great day.